Sometimes doing this show is like loading passengers on a moving train, uh, getting phone connections lined up. Sorry, that was an extended break, but uh, it's just what it took to patch things together, as usual. Um, this is the second part. I won't call it the second hour because, boy, did we fall woefully short of timing tonight. I'm Randy Moggins. It is Off Planet Radio Live for July 17th, 2013. Before I bring up my guest for this hour, I need to say thank you to some people. During the six weeks or so that we were off air, some of you cared enough to continue to support us. That is, like, really awesome because uh, we were gone for a long time and apparently it's important enough that some of you continue to support us. The bills don't stop and um, gosh, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, You are the lifeblood of what we do here and um, with no further ado, because they need very little introduction on this show anymore, I want to bring up my guests for this hour, Duncan O'Finian and Miranda Kelly. Good evening and welcome. Hey, Randy. How are you? I'm doing uh, passively. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where's Duncan? Hello. Oh, no. Oh. Oh no, wait, wait, is he on? It looks like it. It says he's on. It says he's, it says he's on. Well, anyway. I okay, know. I got it, I got it. <laughs> it's the little button uh, on the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hate technology. Well, technology hates you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> The alien landscape of wires, transistors, and transformers. Yeah, it's wonderful. Welcome, guys. It's good to have you back. I wanted to get you on because it's the first show we've done since uh, the weekend of June 27th, 28th, and 29th when we were last together physically. And uh, to try and, I guess, report what actually happened is nearly impossible because each one of these meetings is kind of unique and different and the experience is different for each person we all kind of experience um, an event like this where we get together in very different ways and that's actually I think by design because uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that this is not some big meeting held at a large convention center with hundreds or thousands of people and lots of tables out in the lobby selling books this is a one-on-one experience. This is people interacting with people. You guys spend a fair amount of time doing one-on-one with people on a whole bunch of different levels. So our takeaway from this is that this was uh, probably an exceptional meeting in terms of what got communicated and what happened on the ground, literally. Yeah, it was. Uh, you want to start, honey? Oh, go for it. I I mean, Randy's right. To try to put it into words is really difficult. But, you know, this one, Randy's absolutely right. This one was, this one broke all the rules. You know, this was the exception to the rules. And I don't honestly know of anything that would have made it any better. I mean, it was just one of the most fantastic three days we've ever spent. And that's saying a lot, considering how amazing last year's event in Camp Hill was. That was off the charts. Well, they've all been great. Uh, They've all been great. But, man, this one was just something. You know, there was just something there that we still haven't been able to put our finger on. One of the things that we did differ- differently with this meeting was, and this was by design, um, again, you sort of spelled out some of your uh, goals for our get-together this time, and it had to do with the elements. It had to do with reconnecting back to the earth, and uh, everything from that initial data point just worked out perfectly including where we met this time because we were not inside and it worked out amazingly well because we were literally able to then go through 
all of the elements that were present and um, everything including the weather totally cooperated with this which given the weather forecast that we were given you know at any time the sky could have cracked open and dumped water on us but um, risking having an outdoor meeting was well worth it given what happened and given the flow that we got as we just sort of <coughs> moved into what you were doing Explain a little bit, Duncan and Miranda, the importance of the elements and what they bring to the table in terms of maybe what people don't know about what you, the work that you've been doing in terms of healing, in terms of energy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is an interview. and <laughs> I ask the hard questions. Answer the question. <laughs> You didn't tell me there'd be a quiz. <laughs> it, um, well, you know, the four elements are the, the basics of everything. And one of the things that we have noticed for so many years <clears throat> is there's, there's people out there that say they command the elements, etc. You don't command the elements you work with them and let them work with you um, I found that out the hard way several months ago and it just flowed you know and it just all fit together and everybody has a special element attributed to them and one of the things that we were trying to find was with everyone there to let them discover what their element was whether it be air earth, fire or water and I think on a pretty decent level we accomplished that and then we started doing little experiments and I don't want to call it games but that's kind of the way we, we pushed it little uh, training games to let people practice using that element and which element that they could draw energy from the elements are pure energy and there are four sources of energy that in a great time of need or if you're in trouble you can pull from yeah and one of the things I think about it is there's been a lot of mystique around this idea of our, our personal elements, what they are. Uh, something like this experience for me kind of, there was confirmation on, for me, on what elements were more strongly attractive and working even with the opposite elements in terms of beginning to balance energies. Uh, a lot of people who are in the healing tend to go in one direction to the extreme what we experienced was a lot more balanced and when you said about training and games there was a sense of fun about this there was a sense of adventure because like I said you didn't script this out you had some things in mind but it flowed and it flowed in some pretty amazing ways because we were in a we were in a very beautiful natural surrounding where we had things that we just discovered and the cooperation that we had, even down to the, the, the different creatures that visited us over the weekend, um, we had a chance to experience nature where, I, you know, we were, we were putting energy out as well. And, and I know that the, the yeah. creatures around us sensed it, too. Oh, they did. And um, Miranda and I did uh, some rituals ourselves, and we blessed the ground numerous times that we were on so that definitely helped and once we did that the animals just started coming in um hey it's your turn <laughs> <laughs> well I was just thinking about the the turtle that we got a visit from and that was part of just the wonderfulness of the weekend we had a turtle show up and uh, actually that turtle led us to a spring a, a pool of fresh water with a little spring coming out of it that was so small it was 
something that nobody really noticed, and we ended up using that beautiful spring uh, for part of the healing work that we did, that everybody did. And it, it was, there was just something so, I don't know, synergistic or uh, beautiful about having a turtle show us this powerful basin of flowing water that we tapped into along with the other elements. So there were things like that sort of happening all weekend, and it just, everything really flowed together really well. Yeah. And Go ahead, Duncan. Well, I was just going to say, besides the fact that everybody got to see her standing in it, <laughs> which was cute, um, there, and this was, this was Miranda's idea, I mean, the whole uh, tie everything in together there toward the end was all her idea and it was a fantastic idea is when she stood in the water we had a fire in the middle and put people on the ground and then I controlled the air and we put everybody in a chain holding hands or touching shoulders and put everyone down on the ground one at a time so we were able to draw from all four of the elements at once and there was some fantastic results from that yeah that was amazing so everybody everybody participated in the healing work with everybody else and it was combining all of our energies combining everybody's facility with whatever particular element they were better at working with and combining and focusing it through Duncan to do a healing on whoever was having the healing done on. And he's right. We had some pretty pretty good results. Um, he said it was my idea. That's not really true. I was sort of guided to do this. And uh, it was funny because, well, not funny for Michelin, but she was a really good sport <laughs> about it. <laughs> So I, I'd had this idea to do this kind of healing work and exercise with everybody for a long time, for over a year, since the very first seminar that we did. And it was just in the back of my mind. And then the night before, I got impressed upon me very strongly, you need to do this. You need to do this. This needs to happen in this time, actually happen. So I was sort of mulling it over in my mind, and I was thinking, well, you know, a lot of people have various ailments and health complaints. A lot of us have chronic disease that we're working with, but it would be really great if we could have somebody with something very specific and acute that we could do the healing work on and hopefully have it healed so that it could be a tangible result that people could see. We're not just sitting out there waving crystals around, you know, doing airy-fairy stuff with no tangible results. We're very results oriented, you know, with all of this. We need to, to see that some benefit is actually accomplished. So I was sitting there that morning at the workshop thinking about that and one of the participants, Michelin, who actually we owe a great deal of thanks to, along with you, Randy, for helping get this thing off the ground. But anyway, she we showed up and she was doubled over in pain. And she was, she had, her stomach was really, really upsetting her. And it was weird because she doesn't normally have anything going on with her stomach at all. So we actually went to the drugstore and kind of raided the shelves for various stomach fixing products. And, and it didn't occur to me until a little while after we got back. Duh, hey, hey. Remember that really acute, specific ailment you were looking for to try this whole healing deal with? And I, I, I looked at Michelin, and I'm like, are you still feeling terrible? And she said yes, and I'm like, good! We can do this! Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant. I'm really sorry for your pain, but come be a guinea pig. So, like I said, she was great about it, and we... I mean, it was the, pretty much the first thing we did on day one, so we kind of, everybody jumped in, you know, with both, both feet from the get-go, and 
and we did it. And afterwards, she jumped up and she was moving around and it it was gone. Whatever was bothering her was gone. So that was that was really cool. I thought that was really. I I really felt this time for one thing, Miranda. You were a much stronger participant participant in in this meeting than I had seen you in in the past. Um, you kind of stepped out of the sidelines and 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 had a very strong presence. I also, as I do sometimes, stand back and watch, and watching people kind of coming into their own in this of understanding that this isn't about you coming in and doing a seminar and being the quote-unquote experts or teachers, which you are guides and you are instructors, but really the point was that each one of us was kind of becoming um, activated to do this for other people as well. Very much so, yes. I mean, that's that's been our main message from the very beginning is we don't want students we want teachers because we pe- we need people to go out and have the knowledge and have the confidence to to help other people and it's all about empowering the individual to do that and th- the people that we have there were just mind-blowingly amazingly talented and were so advanced and really needed very little guidance from us. They intuitively grasped pretty much everything. And then there, there was a, a moment in time there, I think it was like Saturday afternoon, I thought I was going to have to drag about a dozen people away from the archery range we set up. People just seemed to, to gravitate toward that which is exactly what we wanted because they were getting the breathing down right and they were getting focused and the more they would shoot the bows when they came back to do the other work they were more focused Mm -hmm. so I think I think we're going to start including that in a lot more of the things that we do yeah, that's actually a, a really good way to physically engage people and then allow them to kind of flow into it um, because it, it's it's something that uh, is kind of unique in what we're doing. And this time we had the ability to do it. You and I went out to a range when you were in last year, but this year we actually incorporated this into the, the training itself and, and I was watching people and I took a lot of pictures some of those pictures are actually on the website as well that you can see of people just really getting into the, the, the shooting shooting the bow and arrow and watching them engage this it, it really does it, it's amazing how focusing that actually is it is it absolutely is um, you know some people talk about needing to meditate and whatnot, well that's that is my meditation. <laughs> it's just go to the range and stand there and, and shoot, just become lost in it. It becomes such a rhythmic uh motion, you know. Pull, draw, shoot, and on and on and on. It's just it's perfect. And if I if if I could, I, uh, since Dana's still on, uh, Dana, honey, I need to apologize again <laughs> for the one we did in Oklahoma with you. Um, I disappeared for a day that Sunday when we were there, so we had a slight problem, but we still pulled it off. Well, your body didn't disappear, but <laughs> the rest of you did. <laughs> True. True. But yeah, I you know we could sit here for the next three hours, and there is just so many adjectives that can be used to describe the, this past three days. I mean, <sighs> remarkable doesn't even begin to describe it 
Well, we had a strong group of people with us. Um, people from all over the country came in. Some were old friends, alumnus of last year, and some were new people that came in. And uh, everybody really flowed well together. One of the things that happens at these meetings, at these events, is that you get to meet other people like you. And that covers a whole range of things, but I think what everyone has in common is when we originally started out doing these meetings we kind of framed them as survival but it's kind of gone beyond that I the, I view this now as more this is beyond survival I, you know survival is an admirable goal but what good is surviving if you don't have quality of life and this meeting really stretched into quality of life in a lot of ways the, being able to increase focus engage nature um, the idea that we have some control over our physical, emotional, and psychological well-being. Those are all aspects to this, these meetings that I think really came out full-blown in this particular one. And I can't speak for all the meetings that you've had so far, just the, the two we've had here. But I know, speaking to people right. who've been in all the other meetings, that that's been a pretty consistent thread as well. That's true. That's very true. Um but you're so right with each different one there's been a different group of people so we would have to structure around the individuals and as a group um, that's where we were, we were saying earlier <clears throat> this one just had that perfect mix of people it was just that perfect mix and it was really great also to, I think one of the consistent themes for all of these is people learning to trust their own abilities and, and learning what it looks like to use them as part of their regular lives. But one of the greatest things about this one was seeing the people who had been there the year before and seeing this incredible transformation in them to where they were at one level last year and then seeing them this year suddenly they have more confidence, more knowledge better use of their ability I mean almost completely I don't want to say changed but just an amazing difference in their facility with these tools it was just so gratifying and you know, we had somebody uh, who was there last year say to us, um, I wish I could remember exactly what she said, but she said something like, you know, you guys taught me that I could fight back with a lot of this stuff, that I didn't have to take anything sitting down, and that even if things looked like the worst or that they were so aligned against me, I knew that I could fight, and that was that was so gratifying to hear and and this person really demonstrated that too this person had a whole different attitude about things and had developed so much and that's all we can really ask for I and mean, more than we could ask for it was fantastic yeah it was it was and, and you hit the nail on the head there honey that's the gratification because that's what it's all about is helping <clears throat> helping people change their own situations for the better. And then they, in turn, go out and help other people. And we saw that in action. I mean, Duncan and I would sort of stand back, like you, Randy, and observe a little bit and just see people interacting and helping each other, you know, support information it's like it was just spreading through all these people now that they had this sort of foundation and we could tell that you know in a lot of seminars that you go to you know three months down the road you can't even remember really anything that was talked about maybe you'll come across like a binder of notes or something but we're not interested in that we're interested in in doing things that will stay with people the rest of their lives not 
it's where we like hype up people and it's like rah rah yay for the weekend and then like your life doesn't change at all we have no interest in that so that part was really cool too well, I think on the surface level, you know, if anybody looked at this meeting, you know, in terms of pure numbers, we would be considered failures because the number of people there <laughs> was small. <coughs> but see, that was never the point of these meetings from the beginning, from your perspective, and it certainly wasn't from mine. It was to do exactly what I think we succeeded in doing last year and this year and what you've done in your other meetings as well. It's to bring people in, empower them, activate them, and then get them to pass that knowledge on because that's the way things get done. It's not going to get done on the mass scale. You can't stage media events and big meetings and do this kind of work. This work requires a very different environment, a very different way of approaching what it is that, that's trying to be communicated. Absolutely. And... You said it uh, so right. I think it was maybe Saturday night. The four of us were out on the back patio. And um, when you said that uh, a, a really large group would kill us. Yeah. Yeah, no. You're absolutely right. <clears throat> well, that's the other thing about this is the energy exchange that goes on. And, I mean, as you and Miranda and Debbie and I were sort of the people who were doing the legwork there's a tremendous amount of energy that's exchanged over the course of a weekend like this and that goes to the people who are participants as well, there's actually a fair amount of excitement, there's a fair amount of people pulling off of each other and you know, you get to the end of it and you're, you're tired and it's a good tired but you realize, wow there was some serious energy got exchanged the whole way around here. Absolutely. And there was one time, I think it was early Saturday, that we were doing so much that, when, and I think you, you saw it, the fingers on my right mm -hmm. hand were bruising. Yeah. yeah. And that was just from the energy being expelled out, out of the right hand. We saw some very interesting things in terms of manifestations of energy, and some of it's personal, some of it we can kind of talk about, but even just what was going on with the crystal work and what we saw being taken off of people was it was profound, actually, to see a crystal and see after you've worked with somebody that these crystals are under enormous stress. They're doing some serious capturing of some pretty yeah. nasty stuff in some cases. There were, um, if I remember correctly, we pulled off uh, three attachments from three different people. Um, and yeah, you're right. They, uh, you could act, you could actually see the attachment in the crystal, and then we would have to break and clean the crystals and get rid of it and then start over again so yeah there was um, and and the people that we took them off of they were different after that oh yeah in some cases completely different yeah people people do have breakthroughs because barriers you, we, you know, understanding exactly what this Works. Yeah, Dana's pointing out the crystal that turned black when you you guys were out there. Um, yeah. You didn't see it quite that dramatically, but I know you pretty much burned up a crystal over the course of the weekend here. Um, yep, yeah, I did. That we're what we're talking about a lot of times are are, are things that are blocking people, um, and we all have them. I have I have them, <clears throat> and you've done some work on me as well, and some of my family, and. These blockages, once they're removed, enable people to begin to open up. And their energies are freed up more. They become more aware. They, in many cases, their, their, um, their psychic abilities, their empathic skills, and things like that kind of tend to open up. Yes. 
And one of the things that I think we said on Friday when we first started uh, about all of this is that people with latent abilities are starting to show now. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much that we're the greatest guides in the world. I mean, hell's bells. We're the first ones to say we're not experts on anything. You know, we have some knowledge, and we're more than happy to share it, but we're not, we're not experts. But people that are starting to show the latent abilities definitely right now needs, do need someone to help them out. Because they're going to start seeing things, manifesting things, and doing things that's going to blow their minds. Well, and especially since we're dealing with, Randy, your term that you coined, uh, spiritually targeted individuals. Yeah. A lot of people with abilities, I would go so far as to say most people with abilities are yeah, spiritually I would targeted go individuals. They are, yeah. <laughs> I'd say almost all of them are. They're gifted. And so... Yeah, and what they're dealing with then is, yes, the abilities, but also they're deliberately being hindered by various attachments or other things that are holding them back, that are designed to hamper them and to keep their abilities from coming out. And so I think that's a lot of what we worked with that weekend was identifying the various Things, attachments, or whatever, holding people back, and and removing them, and and teaching people about them. And you know, one of the things too, is we also got several medical diagnoses correct at this this time too, which is gratifying for us as well. Um, that's something we're actually getting better with. Yeah, and then, you know, a medical diagnosis is just that. It points to a problem that a lot of times the medicine itself or the medical establishment doesn't have an answer for. And a yeah. lot of it goes into blocked energy and things that are, are basically attached to the person that just manifests physically. Absolutely. I have a question in the chat room, and it's actually good, and this might be a good place to go. How does one go about picking a crystal for personal use? Hmm. You don't. The crystal picks you. <laughs> but that said, um, I think, well, again, I guess we can't, everybody's different, so it's kind of hard to make a blanket rule about this. We you know, would never say, oh, you picked the wrong crystal, or I guess the wrong crystal picked you. But because we deal with sort of we're, I'll say it again we're very results oriented we don't do things just because it looks good or just you know because because I think that's one of the problems with the so called new age movement is there's all this stuff out there but when you ask you know, okay show me how this benefits me physically or energetically a lot of times it doesn't so we don't do anything fancy with crystals, not at all. In fact, and, and this is something that Duncan taught me years ago, you know, when I saw him doing the work. It, what we use is just your basic clear quartz crystals. That's it. Um, I don't even know the kind that we use. It's actually not quartz. Uh, it is clear. I've got to figure out what the stuff is called. Well, they start clear when we start, to eat, <laughs> yeah. but they don't stay clear very long. <laughs> yeah, and you know, so you you, it's just a basic clear quartz crystal, and what you do with it depends totally on your own intention. So, if you want to use it, sort of dousing wise to diagnose something you put that as your intention if you're using it to remove something same thing if you're using it to send energy because remember crystals are very good transmitters oh yeah 
Oh like we yeah, do I know that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, as far as where to find one, um, where do you normally acquire your crystals? Because I, I I know the person in the chat that's asking this, and it, this is a, this is a very legitimate question. Um, we have two different places. Uh, one's a rock shop. And one is a very special shop that is only open to the public a couple hours a week. Um, it's for... <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, I stepped... I, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 into a corner there. I, yeah. I stepped in it. Uh-huh. Sort of an esoteric in. place, would we say? No. It, no? Well, <laughs> it's for wizards. Okay. Um, I get most of my stuff from them. But that said, you know, in a pinch, you can go down to, like, anywhere that sells quartz crystals, even an arts and craft shop. It doesn't yeah. have to come from, you know, a the super secret store. dessert yeah. store. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and truthfully... Quartz crystals are quartz crystals. So if you want to go into your New Age shop and spend $34 on a quartz crystal, be my guest. But I would recommend going to a rock shop or, you you know, a craft store. You know, there are places that sell them for much less money, and they're the same quality as the other ones. And you don't need, like, a big honking two-foot $900 crystal to do your work. In fact... <laughs> We don't recommend that because, <laughs> well, first of all, it, it looks really awkward carrying it around. And secondly, um, if you do a lot of work with your crystal, it'll get dirty. It'll absorb all the negative energy. Like Duncan and Randy were talking about, it'll turn black. And depending on sort of how intense the work that you do is, there are times when the crystal gets overloaded and it will break or it will get so clogged up with the b- negative energy or the black, you won't be able to clean it, or it'll take months to clean it. So we don't recommend spending a lot of money on a super awesome crystal that, you know, might become a casualty of war sooner rather than later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as far as, I mean, I have not had a lot of crystal experience um, and Duncan actually gave me my crystal that I was using. I did buy another crystal later. And the only thing I can say is, uh, uh, some people in the chat have noted it as well, just trust your intuition if a stone looks right or feels like, because uh, it's a tool. And you're mm-hmm. going to invest into it what it's going to become. The, 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 the quartz exactly. itself is not other than its physical properties. The mystical side of this is when you begin to put your energy into it and as you charge it, which is, you know, that's a whole other subject in itself of charging a crystal. Uh, My most recent crystal, I charged in that little spring out at the grounds the weekend of our meeting together. It was just, I hadn't charged it up until then. And when I looked out in that pool, I went, okay, this is how I'm going to charge the crystal. And I put it in there with... uh, several other crystals and some other things that were in that spring and I left it sit there and that was that was how I charged it but you can use the elements this goes into the elements as well you want to talk about that a little bit Duncan? Yep. Uh, running water um, is one of the best ways to clean a crystal and charge it um, actually tying it up or when, when I want to charge it with, with air that's where people will see me walking out on my own just spinning the thing on the string I'm charging it with the air if I want to charge it with fire um, if it's indoors light a candle and I'll gently you know rotate it around the flame Um, and with the earth just stick it halfway down and let the earth charge it um, the earth will also clean it, but mm-hmm. Randy, what you said is absolutely right. It's about your intention. When you're charging it, you have to. But your intent has to be to charge. 
if you're cleaning, your intent has to be to clean. And obviously, if, if 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 at some point you're doing a lot of negative energy work, you're, you know, you occasionally want to soak it in salt water. That's another way to cleanse. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. At least um, overnight. At least tw- 24 hours. And in terms of, of the, the crystals themselves, because uh, the person that's asked, they asked the initial question is doing some follow-up here. And this is, you know, I don't know a lot about this. What I know is this. After Duncan gifted me with that crystal, and actually a little before this, people had started giving me different types of stones um, as gifts. I've literally really not ever gone out and bought any of this stuff. Somebody, or else I put the energy out there, somehow or another, I've wound up with quite a collection now of some really beautiful stones that are part of a sacred space that that, that I never even set out to have. It was like, these, these were beautiful things that were given to me, and they speak to me, and I love them, and each one's special because of somebody that gave them to me. So I, I've collected a lot of accoutrements now in, in over the last couple of years, and each one of them special, and each one of them is different, and each one of them has a purpose as I go along. A lot of it goes into intention, and as you begin to notice things, you will attract them to you. So by having a crystal, you may begin to attract other things that are part of the intentionality behind what you're going to do in terms of energy work, for instance. Dead on. Dead on. Absolutely. I mean, are you and I have exchanged, because I know you carry what I call a kit, which is basically, you know, a lot of different things that are sacred, special, or useful to you. And I know a lot of the people that I've met in this particular area, people that come to our meetings, do similar things. Everybody seems to have their own little things that they carry with them and that they use in this. And it's highly personal, and it's very much what you're drawn to. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's not only what is sacred to the individual, but it's also what that person is drawn to as a tool because you said it so adaptly a little bit ago crystals are used as tools and so are other things so is different kinds of salt uh, different kinds of feathers uh, like the the eagle feather Mm -hmm. that we used on this weekend uh, and so on and so forth and you know, I have my medicine bag, my, my ring bag. I carry specific things in that that are specific to me and what I do. Miranda has the, has the same thing, that she carries things that are specific to her and what she does. And that's why it's so difficult. You know, we can't, there is no template for everybody to say, you need to carry this feather, this crystal. It doesn't work that way. We, it, it's not the same for everybody, and that's part of why we have to sort of do these smaller ones. It's it's so individualized that you just can't generalize for people, and you shouldn't. And but we do for a lot of people, like Duncan said, who just inherently understand that and are in touch enough with their own intuition, their own genealogy you know what they're attracted to they know how to figure that out even if they don't know what it is they know how to find it which is or or more importantly the objects find you because you begin to attract them what's interesting to me is how meaningful symbols are now showing up in my reality on a regular basis and I'm I'm not consciously Mm -hmm. looking for them they just show up, um, kind of like the synchronicity thing. It, again, it's kind of tuning your attention and your intentionality in a way mm-hmm. that's uniquely you. Um, different ethnic things. Um, we talked a little bit about this at the meeting, um, some of the things that go into Odinism, which is something that you've talked about on the show as well before. 
Um, right. Some of us have a Celtic stream. Some of us have a more Native American stream as well. And a lot of times we're merging and we're mixing up all these influences, which I find oh. really fascinating. A absolutely. What uh, we did the entire weekend was a combination of uh, Native American culture and Odinism. And Odinism is not a religion. It's, it's a way of life. It's a culture. And both have their, <sighs> figure out how to phrase this correctly, they're similar but different, okay, in, in the, the functions of what they do to help folk to help people but there's more similarities than differences and for us they complement each other so well that we just couldn't see not combining the two so um, where do we want to go here I, um, oh, are there Grant, fu yeah, uh, future plans let's Time. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, that was your... Uh, August, the, the weekend of August the 23rd. Del uh, I'm going to say it right, honey, I promise. Okay. Duluth, Minnesota. Very good. Thank you. I practiced on that all. I practiced all day. Uh, <laughs> inside joke. <laughs> yeah, you should have heard his earlier pronunciation to that. It was not pretty. No. Uh the weekend of August the 23rd, Duluth, Minnesota, will be the next one. This one kind of came out of nowhere. Um, we have the hotel already. It's a, a casino hotel. Extremely cheap rooms. Uh, it's only about 15 minutes from the location. It will be outside, just like this last one at Camp Hill. Uh, we will have to cut it off at about 15 people, though, because there's already a group involved in this. And we'll get all the information out and get it to you, Randy, uh, yep. sometime tomorrow. Okay, good. Yeah, I knew that was coming up. It was uh, somebody texted me earlier this week and mentioned it. Yeah. And I said, well, I guess I'll learn about it when you do on the show tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, it, you know, it, it, it kind of came up out of nowhere. It was just like, you know, lightning bolt, boom, and, you know, the next thing we know, it's happening. <laughs> and we're like, holy crap. And the past few days um, have been a little, how, how would we say it, helter intense. skelter. <laughs> yeah, they're very intense. Very intense. Um, you know, I, a lot of people, I... I I need to throw this out there. Some people from time to time complain about not being able to get a hold of us. Guys, Randy can't get a hold of us sometimes for as much as two weeks. When we're when we're off doing something, it's impossible to get a hold of us. So if you if you know if you're writing us or texting or messaging, hang in there. We'll get to you. Promise. This ain't promising win. <laughs> okay. Anything else you guys want to want to bring up here? We're kind of coming up on the um, <clears throat> the witching hour for me tonight. I'm still getting my energies back after this last few weeks. But right. uh, I wanted anything uh, that you wanted to toss out or anything you want to talk about. I mean, we've got some time here. Yeah, one thing, and somebody's probably going to tear into me but I'm going to say it anyway I got to tell people how proud I am of Miranda she uh, a couple of weeks ago well what was it about two weeks before this last gathering she got pulled into a full blown exorcism on her own and she was successful that is extremely powerful and very proud. It was a surprise exorcism. <laughs> Let me just say that. I was not expecting to have to do one. But thank you. So... 
Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of we're, we're, what's going on tonight is this is like after six weeks of not doing radio I've deliberately made it easy on myself because uh, I gotta tell you there was a part of me that was thinking about not coming back I mean I was actually at that headspace for a while and I knew I would I knew I'd miss it and I have commitments to people and I do love it but so I'm kind of like tonight's kind of like me coming back into the fray again after being off for a while and I wish it would have been a, a vacation but it really wasn't so um, but the part of it that was great was uh, the time that we got to spend together and um, meeting some new friends and seeing a lot of old people old friends that came in for the, the camp home meeting and that that's the kind of thing we can hope for is that eventually we'll build these little pockets and networks through these meetings and people can begin to connect in some new and interesting ways as well kind of kind of hope to build a network out of that loosely well, not exactly yeah yeah not a club not a no. uh, a fraternity or anything of the sort just a loose knit group of people that for any other name can just be there for each other. Well, someone yeah, in the chat I room is yeah. Someone in the chat room is asking if you want to share any details about the exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. Uh, let's see where to start. Well, I probably should have known that. Well, I knew things we're going to probably get bad. Um, a, a very, very good friend of mine lives in an old Masonic temple <clears throat> right next to the new Masonic temple in uh, the oldest building in that town, actually. And so uh, she had a roommate who had a demonic attachment and she'd gotten rid of that roommate and I was just going over there to do a cleanse as much cleansing as I could because that place is massive the ceilings are like I don't know how many feet high they are but anyway I was just going to do a cleansing so uh, <laughs> I, I brought our little suitcase of stuff over thankfully I was fully armed I had holy water and you know the sage and a bunch of other stuff so uh, what happened was I had uh, put us <laughs> how ironic in a protective circle and was basically doing a prayer of exorcism for the space itself but what I did not realize was that my friend had a demonic attachment and so what I ended up doing was provoking and starting to exercise her demon basically and it got upset and agitated and started choking her and if there ever was an oh shit moment it was that moment because I'm standing there doing the recitation and all of a sudden I hear this inhuman sound and I look behind me and she has her hands up to her throat and she's going, it's choking me, it's choking me. And I'm like, oh God. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I won't say all the words that I said. <laughs> I said, gee darn, oh heck. Um, <laughs> but I had Duncan on the phone with me, thank goodness. And I was basically like, what do I do? I mean, I... I'd never done this before, and certainly not by my... I mean, yes, I had been involved in doing jobs with Duncan where demons were removed, but I was the assistant, and I never had to go one-on-one -on -one with a, a demon, certainly not in a Masonic temple that was infested with all kinds of stuff. So, anyway, I don't... <laughs> would take too long to tell, but basically... A lot of it, it was straight out of the exorcist like the movie like it got into her it started spitting at me cursing at me trying to claw me I was 
basically all exorcist priest on it, and there was a lot of salt water dumped and a lot of holy water sprinkled, and I don't know how long it took. I kind of lost track of time. But Two hours and 45 minutes. I timed okay. it. Okay. It seemed like about 10 minutes. But, two, uh, <laughs> two hours and 45 minutes. Oh, my God. Wow. So at the end of it, I finally got it to leave, got it out of her, off of her, whatever, and uh, was just left there in a puddle of salt water and holy water covered with spittle and scratch marks. But, yeah, we did it. We did it. And then I left. <laughs> I said, have a nice night. I'm going home now. <laughs> and I wouldn't go back into the house until I had fully smudged myself. Like, oh, and on the way home, another demon showed up because the stench of sulfur started wafting into my car. And that was not fun because I was being attacked as I was driving. And it was a two-hour drive, too. So that, And I was exhausted from the exorcism. So, yeah, that was a bit touch-and-go for a bit. But, yeah. Yeah, but you did it. You did it. With your help, I guess I did. Wow. <laughs> My phone was covered in salt water. <laughs> and there was one point where it was, you know, doing its nasty demonic thing. And, and I was holding the cell phone up to, so that Duncan could hear what it was saying. And it just was such a surreal moment, like modern exorcism on speakerphone. <laughs> that was, I was a little weird. I'm like, <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> But, you know, these are things people deal with all the time, and it's, this stuff is real. This yeah, stuff is real. it is real. And, uh, you know, if you can make the meetings, you're going to begin to kind of gradually ease into a place where you won't get freaked out anymore. Because that's the first thing. It's like what Dana was talking about in the first hour. We kind of have to get past this fear thing that's been embedded in us and understand it's part of the world we live in currently. There is evil, there is demonic, there's entities. Um, I'm not sure about... Uh, somebody asked me the question earlier about a certain ET race that's supposedly making contact. I'm not sure about that, but I am pretty sure about the uh, shag nasties that are out there dwelling sometimes inside of people. Oh, yeah. That's, um, as far as alien races and whatnot, that's really not our our forte. Uh, we've seen some of them, but other than that, it's just not really our... Our bailiwick. Yeah, I like what you know. Randy said the shag nasties, the demonics, the interdimensional heebie-jeebies. Those are, are pretty much what we deal with. Well, I'll just I'll just say this: we're dealing with a lot of different things. You know, the veil's thinning, and that's good because it means that now you can begin to step into your power. You don't have the control grid telling you anymore. You can't do this. You can't do that. And yes, this shit is real. Um, as far as the alien races go and official disclosure, I wouldn't hold my breath. Um, no. Anything that's that intelligent and that powerful has basically, just like Star Trek, um, what was it the uh, in Star Trek? Oh, my brain is really fading yeah. here. Yeah, prime directive. Prime directive. Um, anything that's messing with you is probably not the good guys, and uh, I don't think you're going to see a formal government disclosure for the same reason you're not going to see it with black ops projects because the liability is too high. Your government's lied to you for 60 years, and they have every reason in the world to continue doing so because they have huge liabilities if the truth is ever formally disclosed on any of this. 
Yep. Well, and again, something that we always say is, why would you look to a government, especially the ones that exist now, to validate something that you already know to be true? Why do you need somebody, quote, official to say that? Why is that so important? It seems like people's priorities are a little bit out of whack if they're waiting for official acknowledgement. Well, and the, the one more thing, and I, I, I always need to toss this in <clears throat> because I watch the loonies on the Internet. Anybody that thinks that an alien race is going to come in and liberate you from the dark cabal government and then give you a Nasara check so you can live blissfully the rest <laughs> of your life, you are flipping delusional. Okay? <laughs> Just So we're real no, clear on man. this because this has been a source of continually pissing me off for about two years now. That's dead on, man. You know, and I, I even wrote this in an article today. Um, if you're if you're sitting around waiting for the space brothers to come come down and save you from a mess that you have been part of to begin with, mm-hmm. ain't happening. Get you know get off your collective lazy duffs and fix the problem. Yep. You know, but you're sitting on your butt waiting for somebody else to fix the problem while the planet goes to hell in a handbasket. This goes back to the earliest conversations that Duncan and I had and that we've talked about continuously, the three of us, on different interviews. It's the reason yep. why um, this CERN thing looms large, and it's the reason why humanity has to make some decisions about what they're going to do to help themselves because anything that can set you free can enslave you. You're the person that sets you free. People have to change inside first. Even, and we've said this before, even if all debt planet-wide was wiped out tomorrow, it would take very little time unless people change themselves inside before it would be right back where it was before it was wiped out. Yep. Got to change inside first. And that brings us back into the purpose for why we do these meetings, of why Duncan and Miranda go out and travel around to work with small groups of people. Because empowering a few enables other people to begin to activate this into the collective. In other words, the idea that we can be empowered is something that has to be installed into the collective again because we've spent generations uh, bending over for governments, bending over for religions, bending over for anything that looks like an authority figure and we've never looked inside of our own selves for the answers. That's why I close this show every week saying the truth is out there, it's inside you, because it is. And that's the part that we need to get to and that's the point of why we do these meetings. Absolutely. What was that Margaret Mead quote? Um, Never underestimate the power of a small group to change things you know, indeed, it is the only thing that ever has, or something like that. It's, I'm totally yeah, it is a Margaret Mead quote. And history yeah. pivots on roughly 3 to 5 percent of the population at any given time. They're the people who shift civilizations. It's not done by the majority, it never has been. Right, absolutely right. And that's all we're trying to do, as you said, with these meetings gatherings I prefer meetings or gatherings to seminars um, it's try to shift things one little group at a time and there are a few people out there who understand exactly what's going on who understand that things are very bad we're basically in a war and we need to be ready be ready inside of ourselves 
more than anything. I think that's one of the reasons why we kind of switched the survival workshops is not from external survival to internal survival and healing. Yep. And it those works. people, yeah, and those people are being drawn together, which is amazing and needed. So one more time, let's give out the dates and particulars for Duluth so people can get their calendars lined up. And then once we have the inner office memo, we'll get that up on the website. Uh, the weekend of August the 23rd, be the 23rd, 4th, and 5th. Okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And what will happen is we'll get that up on the websites. I'll, I'll post it over here at offplanetradio.net and also at offplanetradio.com. And uh, you guys will have the ability then to uh, do what you're going to do to show up. I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight, mainly because I'm going to get up and go to work tomorrow. But, it's time uh, to sleep. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, and it's hot. Did I mention oh, and, and, it's and hot? I, one, <laughs> yes, and one thing I've got to say real fast. Uh, we know that we joke about, you know, Miranda and I always joke about we never, we don't sleep. Randy got to see it this time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They really don't sleep a whole lot. No. Which is fine. I felt very safe knowing that they were on my deck enjoying the night air while I was blissfully sacked out. We'd be sitting out there at 3 a.m. and then get up at 7 the next morning. <laughs> the neighborhood was very quiet. Oh, it is. I love it. It's I love great. it. And I guess... You know, the the last thing we want to say is every uh, from the bottom of, our, of both our hearts to, to Randy, Deb, um, everyone who was there, Ray, everyone. Alice, everyone. Yeah. You know, thank you because without you guys, we couldn't pull any of these off. That is the truth. That is the truth. And I promised I'd say hi to Steve, who's going to be listening to this on his morning commute. So, good morning, Steve. Well, probably Enjoy your not coffee. tomorrow morning, <laughs> but hopefully one morning very soon. You know, we're not very fast here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Steve, uh, shout out to everybody that was here in Camp Hill. Yes, um, everybody. It was perfect. You guys were, you guys were fantastic, and... Uh, much love to all of you. We're going to close it out. Thanks, Duncan and Miranda, for coming on. Thanks to Dana Donlin in the first hour for a great conversation. And uh, Chris Holly and I will return next week. And uh, we're going to be talking about a wide range of paranormals with author Jeff Danilek, OurCuriousWorld.com. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Activate it now. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.